Welcome to another installment of I Found It on Eventbrite. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy watching Swell Entertainment, and today we are talking about TFCon Los Angeles or Transformers Con Los Angeles. And like I said in the intro, I found this on Eventbrite. I did not find this because I am secretly a Transformers fan or anything like that. And when I bring that up, I'm not saying like, oh, how dare you accuse me of being a Transformers fan because I truly do not mind whatsoever. Of all the events I've been to where people are like, oh, are you here because of X? This is the least offensive one, <laughs> I think. I think being accused of being a Wattpad writer would be more bothersome. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Someone's gonna be so mad at me. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the easiest way to buy tickets, whether it's for concerts, sporting events, Broadway, you name it. With over 28 million downloads, they are the number one rated ticketing app. Whether there's an upcoming concert that you're trying to get tickets to, or you just have a free night that you're trying to fill up, SeatGeek has over 70,000 events each day for you to check out. And SeatGeek wants to help you get a good deal. So when you look for tickets, make sure you're looking for the green dots. That means it's a good deal, red means bad, orange is meh, it's fine, but you could do better. Every ticket is back to the buyer guarantee, and if there's something that comes up before the event and you have to return it, they let you return it with swaps. And SeatGeek made sure to hook you guys up, so if you use code SWELL, you'll get $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek. Again, that's code SWELL for $20 off your first order. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. I went to two events this weekend, and I was recognized at both of them repeatedly, and it's funny because um, sometimes people are like, oh, are you doing a review of the event? And other times people are like, oh my gosh, you like this too, which I think is fine because I get like you, if you are a fan of my stuff and you see me in a thing that you're also a fan of, you may want me to also be a fan of that thing so that we have like another connection or like, yay, this person that I like also likes things that I like. I totally get that. That's totally fine. But it's like, you know what I do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I guess we can just say this is what I've done to myself more than anything with the career path that I've chosen at this current juncture of my life. Also, before I get into the rest of this video and the review of the event itself, I want to make something very clear. If you want to comment grown adults playing with toys, grown adults caring about toys, you can comment that because it boosts me in the algorithm. But I'm telling you now, I don't care. The world is on fire, okay? Climate change is running rampant. There's snow on the Hollywood sign, okay? Inflation's insane. We're still reeling from a global pandemic that for some reason, some random survey company decided that there was no long-term mental ramifications from that. And so I think that anything that gets you through the day that doesn't start with M and end in Erder, I think we're good. If you want to collect figurines, go for it. If you want to eat Oreos for breakfast, go for it. You know, like whatever helps you survive, whatever helps give you a little bit of joy that gets you through the day, you know? None of these people are hurting anybody. They're collecting figurines, toys, action figures, whatever you want to call them, because it makes them happy. They are spending their own money. Who cares? I found this on Eventbrite because at the start of the year, I tweeted out, hey guys, I'm planning for the year. Everyone tell me what events you want me to go to throughout the year so I can put it in the calendar now so I can be proactive and get tickets and make sure that I'm able to go. In doing that, I got a couple of options, but then I also started looking up uh, weird conventions, crazy conventions. From doing that, I found a bunch of Los Angeles local conventions for like the first three months of the year or something on Eventbrite. So I started going through them and that's where I found TFCon. And so I was like, oh, this could be something. This could be fun, something different, you know? And at the end of the day, one of the things that I get comments on a lot is Amanda always tells me about events that I had never heard about prior to this, but now I'm invested. Great. I hope you guys learn about events from that. And if you guys are, do like Transformers and you would like to go to something like this, here you go. Now you're prepared for the next years, but also TFCon uh, is actually a national event. They have a couple of different state events as well. So I just pulled up their website and I believe there's multiple locations. So I went to TFCon Los Angeles. I'm looking at TFCon Orlando's images right now. There's TFCon Toronto, and I think that's it, but there's one for Chicago as well. So I think there's just a couple of different ones throughout the States and then obviously Toronto. But a lot of the people that I did end up meeting had flown from other states or had come from other parts of California down to Los Angeles to come to this. I don't even, did I even meet anyone who was local? I'm sure there were plenty of people that were there that were local to Los Angeles or the Burbank area, but for the most part, everyone that I spoke to had traveled from outside of the city, if not outside of the state. So I bought the TFCon LA 2023 Premium Weekend Pass, and that cost me $118.33. I knew Friday was more like a registration day with a few panels, and so the actual event did not start until 5 p.m. of sorts, but registration for the Premium 
reunion registration actually took place in the hotel and not in the main convention center. And that started at 6 p.m. I received an email that day letting me know where to go. Registration for premium was supposed to be from 6 to 7 p.m. And I got there about 6.30 and the line was not that long looking. At the end of the day, this is a fairly small convention compared to other events that I've covered in the past, but it was a surprisingly long uh, time to wait in line. And as we closed in on seven, a bunch of people around me were like, they're gonna let us still register, right? If we get past seven, which we all assumed that probably because then they would have a riot on their hands. And this is a small hallway to have a riot in. I spoke to the man that was in front of me and the couple that was behind me while in line. Now, I always recommend if you can get to early registration for things, one, save your time the actual day of the event once everything else is opened up. If you are able to get to early registration, I think it's better for you for safety reasons, time reasons. If you're trying to kind of control the amount of line standing you are doing, early registration is always the best bet in my opinion. But also I like it, especially for this event was because it was much more mellow because the dealer room, it was always clear that the dealer room was not going to be open that day. So everyone was much more calm is not the word because I wouldn't say that anyone was ever rowdy the entire weekend. So what's the word? Just casual, chill, looking to scope each other out, I guess. So I think that this is partially why when someone asked me like, oh, are you a big collector? And I said, no, I'm here to review the event. I'm a YouTuber. It was met with just more like, oh, okay, cool. Versus like, why are you here? Which is how I've been met with other events previously. Um, when I went to the UFO convention in 2020, that's how I was met by some people. Other people were like, oh, thank God you're gonna talk about us. But the guy in front of me uh, was the one who asked me about the uh, if I was a collector and such, and then we got to talking and then the couple behind us got to talking and all of that. I complimented her because she had like a rhinestone Captain America necklace on. And I was like, oh, I like your necklace. She was like, oh, thank you. It's my Valentine's Day gift because they did the Disneyland Valentine's Day, like sweetheart, after dark thing. I was asking all of them, I was like, oh, have you been to other TFCon? And the guy in front of me said, yes, I've been to like three of them by now. And then the people behind me said, yeah, we've been to one other one, but we've been to, a, we go to a bunch of events like toy events and retro events and things like that. And so I learned very quickly that this event was yes, fans, but so many people who were collectors and very much there to complete their lines that they were trying to complete, complete collections, hunting for deals, things like that. And I got very excited because I have covered quite a bit of what's not a cult, but feels like a cult products and things like that. And I've talked about secondary markets and all this stuff. Though I've been to fandom events and like cons and things like that. I've never been to one where the vast majority of the people in attendance are collectors on the hunt, okay? And so I was so excited. My social media anthropologist senses were tingling, okay? I was so excited. <laughs> they were talking about just a bunch of different things that they were looking for. I recognize none of those names aside from one, which we'll talk about in a minute. I've watched the Transformers movies. I have watched the cartoons when I was a kid. I'm making it very clear now, I'm not claiming to be a Transformers fan. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I am not co-opting <laughs> your, <laughs> I don't want any comments about me being a fake fan. I am not claiming to be a fan. Okay, okay. But they were talking to me about the different figures that they were wanting. And the wife of the couple told me that, yeah, we went to this one event that was supposed to have a lot of toy figurines, but they had barely any Transformers figurines. They had more of this thing that I was looking for. And I, she said it so quickly. I did not, I didn't catch it. And I was like, oh, so there, for something like this, there's probably gonna be more than just Transformers. And she said, oh yeah, there's gonna be so many different things. It's probably gonna be Marvel. It's probably gonna be this, all this stuff. Now, when she said that I got excited, not because I was hoping for Marvel figurines or action figures or anything like that. Um, I am a fan of Marvel, but lately they make me annoyed. And I also just don't really collect their figurines. Um, but there is something that you guys need to know about me if you are going to continue watching this channel. Um, how do I say this? I love the Ninja Turtles, okay? I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, okay? Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael. Those are my little green goblin homies, okay? I love those guys. <laughs> I never usually tell you guys about this, um, but pretty much at all of the uh, events that I've covered, if you've seen me at an event, I have bought some form of Ninja Turtles thing. Season Screamings, um, I bought a bunch of things, but I also bought a bunch of uh, Lego Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures, and then I built them. I did get all four of the brothers, but I also got all three versions of uh, Bubba from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
Look at him. <laughs> the thing with the Ninja Turtles is that every time I try to search for Ninja Turtles merchandise, figures, the like, I come up empty and mad, even on Etsy. No offense to Etsy sellers and things like that. It's just all of the fan-made stuff for um, the Ninja Turtles is either for children or it sucks. No offense. <laughs> That's offensive. Wait, <laughs> I just, I'm really excited for the new Change Me Ninja Turtles movie from Seth Rogen, just because I'm really hoping that it sparks cool merch, okay? That's really what I want. I'm an adult woman. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve cool merch, okay? <laughs> but at events like this and conventions like this, when I'm not going with the sole purpose of finding Ninja Turtles merch or anything, I usually find something. So the initial problem with registration, from what I can understand, is that they weren't just scanning the barcodes, they also had figures and items for sale inside the registration room that you could buy then to then have uh, signed throughout the rest of the event. It was just kind of like, a, oh, look, premium, you get early access to some items, okay? So that's what was causing the holdup in the line. So at one point they just started walking through and scanning all of our barcodes and that's where we got our wristbands. Now I could have gotten out of line at that point because I just wanted the wristband. I knew I wasn't gonna buy any figures, but I was like, let's just see what they have for you guys and to see what the deal was. And sure enough, I wanted the bag. The bags were in the room, so I had to go inside. So this says TFCon 2023, Toys and Hobbies, ages three and up dot CA, and like all the different sponsors and things at the bottom. And it's a very thin bag for the record. It's like one of those mass produced ones. I don't expect high quality from events like this. However, I think that this is always smart one, for any event where you know you're gonna have a lot of vendors, this whole, most of this event, the expo hall was a dealer's room, okay? So you need a bag that is big enough to handle big size boxes basically, or, or boxes and figures in general. So I think this was brilliant because then that takes something extra off of the vendors and the sellers and the exhibitors, et cetera. I've been to quite a few events where they did not give us bags. And then also the vendors just were not prepared for bags because for whatever reason, they thought there was going to be bags or what have you. I've worked retail. I do think that the basket statistic is probably correct. I believe the statistic is that you spend $7 more or buy seven more items than you need or something like that. But the, the concept is that if you're not juggling things, you're gonna spend more money because you don't have to worry about, you kind of forget about it in a little bit because you're just, adding things to cart basically. And I know it's not all in one go, but still, I just think that a bag, always smart and it's extra branding for you and whichever brand decides to help sponsor your bags. I always think you should have a sponsor for the bags. I'll show you what I bought all weekend. Okay, fine. I did buy one piece of Transformers bits because I saw this and I thought it was hilarious. It is an Optimus Prime mini body pillow. <laughs> I got it from the artist alley. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but it's also hilarious. <laughs> Saturday, I bought this. <laughs> this is the only one they had. People were mad that I didn't get Donatello because I personally am a Donatello girl. This is the only one they had, but it's a little backpack. I kind of want to fix the straps because the straps are kind of falling off, um, but it's a little backpack. And it's also, I think this is most size regulations for like concerts and stuff. So I will be bringing this to concerts and stuff. It will fit my cards and that's really it. One of the artists in the artist alley is a viewer. And so she walked up, said, I like your videos, here is a crystal and then kind of walked away. <laughs> So I got a crystal. <laughs> Before anyone gives me attitude, I thought about it a long time, okay? I really did. We've got uh, Michelangelo, the rapper from my croissant, Donatello, Leonardo, if he'll fit, and Raphael. There was only one other table that had all figure, four figures and I did not like the design of those. So I got these ones and I thought about it repeatedly. These were $10 a piece. I do not feel bad about it. Do not make me feel bad about it because I will just block you from the channel for funsies. I tolerate a lot. I will not tolerate discrepancies against my little green goblin men, okay? Um, I also got this. I did not buy this. I won this because I beat a cat at rock, paper, scissors. A giant cat. Yes, there is video. So ticket registration happened and then there was a panel from Transformers Toys in the 2020s, Hypostasizing a Healthy Hobby hosted by Chris Ho. He is a Transformers YouTuber, I believe. Uh, he did quite a few things. Opening ceremonies, which lasted a whopping three minutes. And then there was a panel Q&A with the writer and storyboard artist of Transformers Generation One. That was the last panel. And I left a little bit into that because I was just exhausted. So. 
Saturday, heads up, I had to leave early because we had the streamer awards. Yes, that will be a different video. So they had 8 a.m. late registration and ticket sales. Oh yeah, side note. Everyone always tells me that I took tickets from someone else who could have been there. Um, one, you can buy a ticket. It's available. They were still selling tickets out there. I did not take anyone's spot. I want to make that very clear. I hear that from time to time. I'm sorry, I'm quick and I spend my own money to go to things. Apologies. I probably got inside right at like 9.20. And when I tell you that the people already had their yellow bags full of boxes at 9.20, people wasted no time. Like no one was shoving. It was all very polite, but there were people on a mission. There were people who were cutting in line. They were like, oh, someone's is up there. They did not go and meet anyone. They were zooming past us. We were at the end of the line. The line was still behind me. And they're zooming right on past in with their wristbands that they already got to go on in, you know? And so it's just, it was interesting because it was like polite. What is the word? Polite rushing is probably the best word. And I was just like, oh, what happens when someone like loses their mind, you know? Because I'm, I'm always curious, like, okay, what would take someone like this to snap, you know? Because I'm crazy. And so, I, but everyone was very polite. And then what I kept hearing a lot of times is someone would walk up to a table and say, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. What do you have? And if they didn't have any, they would walk away. Sometimes they would take their time and peruse, but a lot of times it was, I want X, Y, and Z. That's all I'm looking for. And there were people who did do that and did not buy a single thing. A lot of people would buy things regardless. I went to the 10 a.m. Manic Marathon Toy Review Challenge hosted by Chris Ho, uh, where he would review toys from a bag, but he had to do different challenges, including tape his thumbs. But I wanted to yell, you're taping your thumbs around because he, he was still using his thumbs. I could see it. Okay, just saying. After the Manic Marathon, I went back into the dealer's room to do a lap and check out the Artist Alley one more time. And then I decided it was probably best for me to get on the road because I didn't know how long it would take for me to get back to my apartment to get ready for the stream reward. So that's all I have to tell you about Saturday. Sunday, you guys got me from open to almost close. Not to close, close, almost close. Something that I did think that was smart about the layout is that they had the dealer's room and the artist alley on one side. And then the actual ballroom hall was actually in the lobby of the hotel. In the actual dealer hall itself, they had pretty much dealer hall, exhibitors, toys, the like. And then around the sides, they had the uh, autographs, signers, photos, those things. And then they had a couple of separate autograph rooms for uh, people like Peter Cullen and things like that. Uh, but they were, I never even tried to get into those lines because the lines were insane. Sunday morning as well, they had a bunch of cars outside. And then in the morning as well, there was a bumblebee. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. I'm assuming he went into one of the other rooms or something, or he may have left or taken it off. After I went inside the dealer's room, I did not see him again. Something that I thought was interesting, obviously there was one day passes. And though there was mainly one day passes for the Saturday, there were a few people who had one day passes for Sunday, but Sunday was much more mellow. It was very crowded on Saturday. Monday was much more mellow. And even then I was expecting for the dealer's room to be much more picked through than it actually was. Now, I know a lot of these people run legitimate stores, not that all dealers in this dealer hall were not legitimate, that's not my point. Like I'm thinking like brick and mortars, online stores, whatever, they have a lot of stock is my point. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that they restocked things that had been bought if they had extras or they just filled in the gaps with other things. But I was expecting, there was only a few tables slash booths, rooms, halls, whatever, that I was like, I see noticeable gaps between Saturday and Sunday. It's interesting because yes, a lot of these toys were being sold and a lot of people were buying things. But then, I mean, at the end of the day is like, how many boxes can you fit in one yellow bag? Like if you spend a few hundred dollars on toys, you've probably spent all you plan on spending already, you know? So it was just interesting. I really wanna know the number side of things for the actual vendors themselves out of this, but you know, obviously I don't think that's data we're ever gonna really get. But I kept bumping into the guy who was in front of me in line throughout the venues while I was there. And he just kept saying, hey, it's the reviewer repeatedly. And so finally, after we parted away the last time, I was like, my name's Amanda, by the way, what's your name? I, you keep calling me the reviewer. I don't think we ever exchanged names. Um, <laughs> his name was Paul, he says hi. But we talked for a little bit because I had seen him the Saturday and he had a bunch of stuff in his bag and he had different stuff in his bag this day, obviously. And so I was like, hey, you find what you're looking for? And he was like, yeah. And um, oh, I forgot to tell you about the Unicron thing. Hold on, we'll go back to that. It was like, I was expecting more people to have bought things that it was supposed to be more picked through. And he was like, well, you know, a lot of people came yesterday and he was talking mainly about the crowds. And I was like, no, I understand that the crowd is smaller today. I get that. Um, and then he pointed at 
one item that was on top of the cage, which I always love the cages at cons because it seems like a death match waiting to happen. And the horror movie lover part of my brain is like, ooh, this is potential. And so it's like when they have the, the grates, the display grates, and they basically make a cage from the display grates so that they can kind of control who goes in and who goes out, make sure no one's stealing things. On one hand, I think it's very smart. On the other hand, my brain is like, oh, what if someone fights over a toy? And then they just go, ape shit, you know, like you're stuck in there with them. I tried to go in there a couple of times and it was just gonna be a little too cramped for me and I just dipped. Um, but he pointed out one item on top and he was like, that's what everyone wants here. And I think he said the item was like $800 or something. And I was like, oh, what about it do you want? Well, one, it's all assembled because the box is so big. So it's not like you have to attach the arms or that all the pieces aren't connected or anything. It's all together. So that's why the box is so big. But apparently it was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive and I was like, so why is that why they want it is because there was less items. Like I was really trying to understand the scarcity, the frenzy around certain items and things like that because my friend had asked me that as well when I told him that I was at, shout out Mike from Mike, Mike and Oscar. He was trying to understand if they were vintage toys or new toys. And I was like, I think it's everything. And sure enough, this person was telling me how he was looking for newer runs of toys because the older runs of toys are just harder to get basically. But even these ones that he was trying to get were still hard to get. And so I was trying to understand like the scarcity mindset. Is this all fan made? Is this all second secondary market type of situation like with Ray Dunn and things like that and Squishmallows and all this other stuff. He was like, well, the difference between this one is one, there was only so many of them made. So there only so many were sold at San Diego Comic-Con, but also the legs are like metal or silver. They look like metal versus the original ones are just white. That's all they changed. And they can charge so much more money for it. And I was like, huh, okay. And then he pointed out the one next to me who was just trying to break down some of the different toys around it and all that. And as far as I could tell when I left, that toy still had not been sold, but it being higher up, I'm assuming it's partially because the box is so big, but also would make sense in my brain of why people would want it more. So while I was in line, okay, waiting for uh, the registration originally Friday night, guy in front of me, couple behind me started talking about the Unicron. And they were like, yeah, last year I almost bought it because it was X amount of dollars, but it was just so big. And they started talking about how, yeah, you would need to have like a whole man cave to like be able to display it properly because it takes up so much space. And then they were talking about how, well, we have a house and I'm gonna have a game room slash man cave slash office slash whatever to do. So I would be able to present it. And so they were talking about it. And then his wife, went to go check something else out because I think she had a different type of badge or something, but she went to go get something. And while they, while she was gone, we were talking about something else. We got quiet for a minute, we stopped talking. And then one of the organizers for TFCon walks up and says, so I hear one of you is looking for a Unicron. And the guy who's looking for the Unicron immediately goes, I don't know, maybe, are you looking for a Unicron? But who's asking? And I just leaned back like, oh, this is great. This is good. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> so they were st going back and forth and talking. And I was like, I love how immediately it just slipped into like backstall deal immediately. And so sure enough, it starts talking like, yeah, just let me know. I'll be in this room. We'll have this, this stall, all this stuff leaves. And then they start talking about how much it was, 1,300, 1,400. I think I can get him down to 1,100. And then his wife came back and I was like, you'd be so proud of him. He played it so cool. <laughs> and they were like using me to like explain how big it was. They're like, yeah, it'd be like to your hip here. It'd be like to your thigh, like trying to explain to me. Cause I was like, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. And so they were trying to explain it to me and how big it was. And then in the expo hall, I saw the box and I was like, oh my God, that's what they were talking about. So I did not see the actual Unicron itself, but I saw the Unicron box and the Unicron box itself is so big. I almost asked them if they could film me trying to lift it, but I also would be worried that I would drop it and break something and then I would die internally. But then therefore I would legally die in real life. Anxiety people, you know what I mean. So here's the box I will show you. It's pretty massive. And so having that imagery of like, oh my God, this is what they were talking about, was just a very nice full circle moment in my brain as someone who is nosy, okay? <laughs> and curious about life and things and different uh, industries and fandoms and the like that I'm not a part of, okay? So as a YouTuber, naturally, I had to go to the Transformers YouTubers Transforming Media panel. 
legally I had to go, okay? YouTuber support, YouTubers. And I don't know what happened with the Transformers YouTubers panel, okay? Because one person that was supposed to be on the panel was not there because they got COVID two days before. So smart move that they didn't try and come, obviously. Then someone was actually on staff, so they came in a little later. And then I was sitting like toward, like halfway toward the back for this panel. And so I didn't fully understand what was happening in the moment. I just thought this was a Game Awards Bill Clinton moment. Honestly, for a little bit, basically there was someone who was sitting up front who said that they had an answer to a question because they were asking about like, if you've ever gotten a comma that makes it worthy of being YouTuber, like reminds you of why you do this type of thing. And it was just a, a like a simple, like to get the Q and A started type of question. And so someone in the front row said, I think they had, I think they said they had an answer and they were like, um, oh, I'm a YouTuber as well. Can I come sit up there? Yeah, if we make a quick type of thing. And there, I couldn't tell what was going on, but all of a sudden this guy got up there, sat down, took one of the mics and then didn't really give it back. <laughs> but he, he is a Transformers YouTuber, I believe. I think he had 40K or something. Like he, he's, he is a YouTuber. He just clearly was not originally on this panel. And I was just very surprised by when it happened. I was like, like, it's fine, you know, obviously it was fine, but it was just like one of those moments where it was like, is this allowed? <laughs> so one of the people on the panel, uh, Kean Carlisle, I believe, um, he's a viewer. He noticed me when I walked in, said hi, and then he went into the panel and then we bumped into each other after the fact that he said, if I ever needed any, if I needed footage from the panel itself, he would get it to me, which was very nice. But he apparently has been working on a like fan film for uh, Transformers. And so he showed clips of that and it was funny, it looked good. Uh, apparently that'll be out as this video is out. So uh, maybe I can link it or something. Once that one was left, I went and did one last lap around the dealer's room. People were already starting to take down their displays because it was going to close at four. And I was like, okay, I think I've seen what I needed to see. And I left. As far as the event goes itself, will I come back again? If I become a hardcore fan of the Transformers tomorrow, sure. Why not? Once again, for this channel, it's mostly a one and done type of thing. One thing I wanna make note of as well is that there was one major issue for this event, but not a major issue, but it was kind of a issue. I can understand why it would be a major issue, but okay. So parking was a problem, but also not a problem. You see the parking lot situation, I think was very good. There was the hotel parking and then the convention center parking. So there was plenty of parking in my opinion, I never once had issues with parking. Thing is, is that there was two entrances and exits to get in and out of the parking lot. And each time, each day, those beams were up. Didn't have to take a ticket, you just drove on in. So then when you're entering the dealer hall and you see a sign that says $15 event parking, you get a little confused because how are you enforcing that? So apparently what they were doing was that they were charging $15 for event parking for the entire weekend. I didn't go and ask them because I never once paid for parking because why would I? With events like this, I can understand why paying for parking and all of that. And if the lot was closed and I had to take a ticket and all that stuff, if I had to pay for parking, I would pay for parking. It's not a big deal. However, there was no barrier to entry that would require me to pay for parking other than there was a table that I could walk right past and half the time no one was actually sitting there to charge for parking. So apparently what we were supposed to do was pay that and then get us a card that we didn't display in our window. However, when you have that where you had it to enter the dealer hall and not even for the VIP entrance, just entering the dealer hall uh, that led then into the uh, artist alley and then the dealer hall itself and the reg regular registration. The last thing I'm gonna do is then get that and go to my car and put that in the car when I've just gone through the line to get inside and there's a toy that I want that I'm gonna fight Susie Joe for, you know? I'm making up the name Susie Joe. If someone named Susie Joe was there, I'm sorry. I don't know how to fix that other than actually having the things go down, you know? And you actually have closed parking because I don't, I'm assuming you guys did not make a ton of money from event parking or the hotel or the event center or whatever. I don't know who was charging for event center parking. Poorly executed, just in my opinion. Um, I didn't pay it. A lot of people did not pay it. Bumped into a couple of people, apparently had been behind me in line or something and they had booked it past me. And then later they were like, hey, I saw you in line. I, sorry, I ran past you. I didn't wanna pay for parking. I'm assuming that that's the case with a lot of people. I never even ran past them. I just kept walking because when in doubt, keep your head up and move forward. Now, if I had been stopped and said, hey, you have to pay for parking, I would have paid for parking, but you didn't do that. In conclusion, will I go again? Probably not. Like I said, I am not a hardcore fan of the Transformers. I just review events. 
I have reviewed TFCon LA. Therefore, my job is done. <sighs> What's that Sailor Moon bit? I've done it, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> I did have a good time. I met a lot of nice people. I met a lot of nice people that were viewers. Um, I saw a lot of very frazzled parents who took their children here. Um, I saw a lot of uh, couples that were very excited to be together at this event and all this stuff. Oh, you'll be proud of me. I did not buy the $400 number four edition of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I do have some self-control. I don't even really have any downsides. The parking thing is more a note more than anything. Yeah, the pricing is fine. Three days, 118 bucks, that's fine. I think the space was fine. It warmed up quite a bit in that space, but that's just the nature of convention halls when the ceiling is not too high, I think, uh, which is the convention hall. It's not you guys. You know, nitpicky note, you could brand these things, you know, TFCon. It's always fun. Do you like the Transformers? Have you ever heard of TFCon? Are you annoyed I went to TFCon for whatever reason? Will you go to TFCon now that you know about it? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder of a podcast, the Special Hands podcast. I have no idea if there's going to be a shirt design for this video, but I will think about it. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, let me see down below. If you'd like to comment on social media, that'll be up here. And that's going to be it. Have a the day. Goodbye. Lots of cosplays that were very cool. Um, I don't think I got any clips of any of them because I kept meaning to be like, oh, hey, can I take a video clip of you? And then I didn't because I'm anxious. Thank you, Andrew, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris B, Chris P, Crash BC, China, Dirty One, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Jacare, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Meme Lord, Liam, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Nocturnal, Pat Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Wendy, Winter, Will, William, Zendry, Zwink.